Hello! Welcome to the integral calculus video for estimating pi using the integral test. The intensity of this video is medium. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objective for this video is by the end of this video, you should be able to use integrals to bound errors of partial sums. Our motivation is the following fact. The sum of 1 over k squared from k equals 1 to infinity is pi squared over 6. Now, that's not a fact we're going to prove in an in a first integral calculus course, but we're going to use it for this video. And you can use this fact to get an approximation for pi. So let's first talk about how the integral test relates to sums. So taking the function 1 over x squared, we can draw it right here, 1 over x squared. And here's 1 over x squared. And we're going to put rectangles either above or below the integral, or below the function, I should say. And each of the rectangles will have a width of 1. Here I've gone out just to 4, um, just because it's easier to see in a picture, um, but you could go as far as you want. Now, these rectangles all overestimate the integral, and these uh, rectangles underestimate the integral. And in each case, we can figure out what exactly is the height and width of the rectangles. So for the first one, here's the integral under the curve um, f of x from 1 to 4. And it's less than the sum of these three rectangles. The first rectangle has height f of 1. The second rectangle has height f of 2. The third rectangle has height f of 3. And the widths are all 1. So the first picture actually tells us this inequality, that the integral is less than the sum of the first uh, the function of the first three values. Now for the second one, um, here instead we get an underestimate. So the integral is actually bigger than the sum of the three rec the areas of the rectangles. What are the heights of these ones? This one is f of 2, this one's f of 3, and this one's f of 4. So we can write that. Notice how there's quite a bit of similarity. So here we have a bunch of the terms, the function at a bunch of values, um, but they're offset by one. The underestimates start at two and end at four. The overestimates start at one and end at three. Now, there was nothing really special about four here. We can use this for going out to five or six or a thousand or whatever we want. So there's actually a more general version of this. So if instead of going to 4, you go to a general n, then you get that the sum from 2 to n is less than or equal to the integral from 1 to n, and that's less than or equal to the overestimate from k equals 1 to n minus 1. Now the confusing thing here is not that we're underestimating and overestimating. The confusing thing is how the indexes change, so the upper and lower indexes. One thing that can help you understand this is by looking at the previous example seeing that the overestimates start at the first index and end at an index previous. So here for the overestimate, we start at the index one and we end at the index that's one below what we started with. So it's n minus one instead of n. And then for the underestimates, we go, we start one later. So we start at two, just like this one. And we go all the way up to n. So we go all the way up to n. All right. So these are the bounds that we get um, from the picture. And if you let n go to infinity, you actually squeeze an integral, an improper integral, between two series. Now, this is where we got the integral test from. But we're going to interpret it slightly differently so that we can get a bound on something else related to the, to the series. So the first thing for us to realize is that here, starting at 1, wasn't so important. We could have started at a later term, and that would have pushed this term to be later, and it would have pushed this term to be later. So everything can go up um, a certain amount, and that'll give us estimates on the, the sort of end of the integral or the end of the sums. So let's write that down. So if you, you were to start at a different index n, then you would get this estimate. So the sum starting from k equals n plus 1 all the way to infinity would be less than the integral from n to infinity of f of x. 
Now, of course, there's an upper estimate as well, but we're not going to use that one in this video. So I'm just going to focus on the the, the estimate, uh, the sort of underestimate, if you want. Now, this is actually very special. This actually tells us something called an error bound. So let me explain what that means. So this is telling us that the tail of the series is actually less than the integral. And the integral is something that we can usually compute. Right? We spend a lot of time computing improper integrals. So this thing we can find an exact uh, number for, whereas this sum is hard to compute exactly, but we can instead bound it by something. Now, what do I mean by a tail or error? Well, here's the full sum, the sum from k equals one to infinity. And we're gonna think about it as if we take an initial sum, like if we add up the first 100 terms or 200 terms, how much uh, of what remains is like actually relevant? How big is it? So we're gonna typically think of this as our estimate and what's remaining will be the tail of the series or maybe we can think of it as the error and we hopefully will have that that error isn't very large. So let's look at a concrete example, which will help um, solidify this. How large does n have to be so that the partial sum, if you add up the one over one squared plus one over two squared, all the way up to one over n squared, how big do you have to choose n so that this value is within eight decimal places of pi squared over six? Remember that if we take the infinite sum, we'll get exactly pi squared over six. So how far do we have to go to get close enough to pi squared over six? And for us in this context, close enough means eight decimal places. All right, well, let's use our estimate to tell us that. So one technical thing we'll need is that eight decimal places means an error of one half, one over 10 to the eight. So one over 10 to the eight tells us like the actual decimal place and if you want your answer to be within, um, or to have eight decimal places of uh, being correct, you need to make sure that the previous decimal place is within a half. Um, basically, this is like this is to account for rounding. That's what the 0 0.5 is, is taking into account. It's not really that important, and most of the time, even if you just did 1 over 10 to the 8, you'd have something really close. OK, so now let's compute the error. So by our previous um, uh, observation, the error is less than the integral. And this integral, the integral from n equals in n to infinity, sorry, the integral from x equals n to infinity of one over x squared is less than this. It's an improper integral. So we do the usual improper integral thing. We know the integral of one over x squared. We evaluate it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. As b goes to infinity, this term goes to zero. And then this term just is one over n. It doesn't depend on b. So what we can see is that the error is less than one over n, and the n is how many terms we've added together. So if we add up 100 terms, the error will be less than one over 100. Now, how many terms do we have to take to get within eight decimal places? Well, in this case, you need n, one over n, to be less than uh, this number right here. And if you solve for n, it means as long as n is bigger than 2 times 10 to the 8. And how big is that? It's about 200 million. So in other words, if you want to get a partial sum that's within, uh, that's within 8 decimal points of accuracy, you need to take 200 million terms, which seems like quite a bit. So here are some other exercises. How many terms of the series the sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k squared, one over k cubed, are needed to get within eight decimal places of the infinite sum. Before you compute it, how do you think it will compare to 200 million? Will it be more terms or fewer terms? NASA says that it needs 15 digits of accuracy for pi in its most precise calculations. So how many terms of the series, the sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k squared, are needed to get this level of accuracy? Is this possible to compute with a desktop computer? Here's a link to the article. And let's end with a reflection. When is the error bound from the integral test useful? When might we, we use this? Thank you very much and have a great day.